and good afternoon and welcome to Totality Live. Thank you so much for joining us as we get set for a once in a lifetime event in this one hour special. This is all being brought to you through a partnership with the Arkansas Department of Education's Division of Elementary and Secondary Education. I'm Chris Kane for Arkansas PBS, and thanks so much for being alongside us today. We are thrilled to be here in Russellville, Arkansas, which was named one of the top 10 locations nationally to view this eclipse, according to astronomy.com. We have got excitement behind us as the town and all those visitors, including a group right now just behind me from Los Angeles, have come into the heart of the city in the heart of the River Valley to take in the total solar eclipse. Totality will begin here before the end of the hour. We are thrilled to be alongside not only you here in Russellville, we also have locations all across the state of Arkansas. We're going to bring you different angles to show you what this eclipse looks like statewide. So when it comes down to where are we today, we've got locations set up in Jonesboro at Nettleton High School. We're also set up atop Petty Jean Mountain at the Winthrop Rockefeller Center. That's one of 26 state parks in the path of totality today. And also we are live in the southwestern portion of the state in DeQueen at Samaritan Fields, where totality is expected to start in about 45 minutes. We'll also want to give a special shout out today to our partners on campus back in Conway at the University of Central Arkansas. The Physics and Astronomy Center going to be giving us some unique views as well as NASA TV. We've got NASA scientists just roaming around behind us and we've also got local dignitaries from around the town that we're going to be speaking to about what this means for their city to be able to host the total solar eclipse. Let's go ahead and commence this celestial celebration. And what I remind everybody to do this safely. Make sure you have your total solar eclipse glasses. Make sure they are, they are ISO certified. When you are taking part in this eclipse today, it is certainly something that can be fun, but it also needs to be done safely. So have those glasses ready. And if you have them ready and you happen to be near somewhere outdoors or watching outdoors, you can also take a look at it. And right now, at this very moment, if you look, the moon has already started to traverse across the sun. And so we're already starting to feel a little bit of excitement here behind us as folks are getting ready for it. The mayor, Fred Teague, is going to be joining us here momentarily. He's roaming around talking with citizens, looking at their map. They have a map in the middle of Russellville's town square here, right in front of the train depot. And on that map, you can put a pin from your location. Of course, when you look at the map, the state of Arkansas is completely covered just about. But nationally, all 50 states represented on that map, including 32 countries. So folks coming from all over, I mentioned the family just behind us here off stage from California coming in just for this total solar eclipse. We met folks from Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, and everywhere in between. Folks coming all the way out from the West Coast to the East Coast, and we are thrilled to have them here in Russellville today. So Mayor Fred T going to join us here in just a little bit. He looks like he is still talking with some folks over there as he's making sure everybody feels welcome in the town of Russellville and knows that uh, being a host city is certainly something they are proud of here in the River Valley as they've got visitors from all over, as I mentioned. So he's talking with some folks over there. There he is. Mayor Teague's going to come over and talk with us here in just a few minutes. He's got his glasses ready. Come on over, Mayor Teague. Yes, this is a big event. We know you are a busy man. Thank you so much. Go ahead and put that headset on for us. This is one of those that uh, you don't get to host very often. Arkansas doesn't have world fairs historically. We're not going to host a Super Bowl last time I checked. But what do we have? The total solar eclipse and a path of totality goes right through the heart yes. of your town. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's The energy here is crazy. You're with us, and you can feel the energy of all these people. 50-plus uh, states, or 50, 50 states. Now we can't go 50-plus. That's right. 50 but, states but the and uh, 30, 30 countries. Yeah. It's crazy. Our airport's probably going to land. Uh, they're on target to land about 140 airplanes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, when you look at the people in the town here, you've been talking with so many of them. I was just mentioning you met the family from California just yes. behind us. What are you hearing in the feedback of people who are coming to your city for the first time to witness this? Man, I, we, I think we have one of the greatest communities in the world. You know, your uh, Arkansas is amazing, but Russellville is just a, a, a family, a very welcoming community, and everybody that I've talked to has just been very blessed and very thankful for our uh, our hospitality and what we've been able to do. The preparations have been uh, pretty long standing, not just here but around the state. Tell everybody, give us a little peek behind the curtain what the preparations have been like to host this event. Oh, man, it's 15 months of just hardcore preparation. I can't tell you the tens of thousands of hours that uh, we put into place to make sure that everything is good uh, from, you know, standing up emergency operation centers to make sure everyone's safe. 
Uh, you've got, uh, you know, just like operating an airport, make sure you have enough fuel on, being able to park 140 planes on a small uh, <laughs> regional airport. Uh, just it, just so many things to the to the porta potties out here. Uh, the logistics you know, behind it, logistic right? is, yeah. is, is is just incredible. And, and then it's not lost on you, of course, mm -hmm. and the rest of the state, the economic impact behind this. So what kind of projections yeah. or estimations well, can you give us? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I really don't know until after the end yeah. of it. I, I think our biggest goal is not even the economic impact. Our goal is uh, to, to show up and show out as a community. We're geographically located in the beautiful part with lakes, rivers, mountains, and streams, and we want people to fall in love with Russellville and come back here and actually maybe even think about moving here. You look at NASA right behind us there in those tents. I know yeah. you've been able to talk with the folks over there. How how amazing has it been to coordinate with that agency and, and have line upon line every day that they've been out here and the community connections that you guys have forged with them? Oh, they're incredible. It's uh, They're, they're just uh, the most down-to-earth people in the world. They're great people. We have been grateful to... Uh, make that friendship with them that partnership with them and uh a huge part of the success of this event is just the, the draw of uh of nasa united states rocket center air national guard pbs doing an amazing documentary on us yes. early on was great people talk about that uh the weather channel uh, there's a lot of good things well there's a lot to be excited about today and your city is right in the middle of it all and hey Mother Nature played a big part in it, too, didn't it? Man, <laughs> didn't it's going to be beautiful. It's incredible. <laughs> I was just looking a while ago, and I cannot wait to see totality. I'm going to be right down in the middle of that crowd, and just uh, I'm just going to soak up that energy and soak up uh, just how amazing that experience is going to be. No phone. It's just going to be me and people from multiple countries and all across the United States just unified for that one moment. It's going to be amazing. Four minutes and 12 seconds. Yes. We'll all be unified together. Thank yes. you so much, Mayor T. Thank we you. really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. Thank you. Thank Get you Get back so much. to it and enjoy it out Thank there you. today. We appreciate you. you. All right, so this is one of those events, as we mentioned. We are statewide. This is an opportunity to show you different viewpoints. And I mentioned a few of those locations a moment ago. We're going to begin our coverage where totality will begin here. Before any of it gets to us, it will start in the southwestern portion of the state. And PBS correspondent Mackenzie Holtzclaw is live into Queen, Arkansas, Samaritan Fields, and has the latest down there. Mackenzie. Hi everyone, this is Mackenzie Holtzclaw from Arkansas PBS and we are in Sevier County at the Samaritan Fields in Dequeen, Arkansas and this is our wonderful host. How are you? My name is Esteban Ochoa. And Esteban, tell us about what's going on today. We've got uh, food, we have uh, barbecue, uh, we have tacos over here. We just have a crowd here for the eclipse that, you know, we've been preparing for a while now. We're hoping everybody gets exactly what they came here for. We got a lot of out-of-towners, people from different countries, so we're really excited to host them here. Yeah, absolutely. So just to show you, we've got a pretty good crowd of people behind us. They're gearing up, ready and excited for the eclipse. We've all got our eclipse glasses on, and we're excited. Do you think today's going to be a good day? I think today's going to be a great day. We, you know, we have the people here. Um, it's it looks like it's we we're able to see it decently good. We thought it was going to be a lot worse, so we're making the best of it. But no, we're really enjoying have all the visitors here in Sevier County. Absolutely, me too. I think we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what's going on at the top of um, Petty Jean Mountain. Hello everyone and welcome to Petty Jean Mountain. I am Janet Harris, the Executive Director and CEO of the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute and we are so excited today for the total eclipse. We're excited to host Arkansas PBS here on our beautiful campus on Petty Jean Mountain and we're also very honored to have the Arkansas Space Grant Consortium here doing research uh, and learning and tr working together to create transformational change. That is our mission here at the Institute and we're so proud to be a part of this wonderful event. Event. If you want to learn more about the Institute and what we do, visit us at RockefellerInstitute.org. We have been a place of convening and learning for over 70 years since Winthrop Rockefeller moved here in 1953 and built a cattle farm and conference center where people can come together, collaborate, connect, and create transformational change together. And we hope you will come and be a part of our work as well. Enjoy the total eclipse. Back to you. Day. at the softball field. Listen, we are super excited. We have some of McKenzie's team behind us. McKenzie, this is a wonderful moment. Tell us how you're feeling. I'm so excited because, I mean, like, this is so amazing. This is a, like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm so happy to be sharing this with my family and my friends. 
Absolutely. So we found out that the solar eclipse will be coming through Arkansas in about October. So tell us a little bit about those feelings from October all the way until now. Um, in October, I was definitely surprised that it was happening, especially here and coming up this quick. Because, I mean, fifth grade was like 2017 when I found out that it was going to be in 2024. I'm like, wow, this, that's a long time from now. I probably won't even remember. And here I am, and it's going to be super exciting and cool. Awesome, awesome. So tell us from 2017 to 2024, what's one of the biggest things that you were looking forward to? Um, about the eclipse? Yes. I guess just definitely getting to see it again and being in that same mindset and experience and being able to watch it again and just being able to see this amazing natural event. Absolutely. And you're here with some of your softball teammates, which I know we're super excited. We're going to chat a little bit more. We're going to send it back to Chris in Russellville. And welcome you back into Russellville. Thank you, Candace Evans in Jonesboro with McKenzie Racy. And also, of course, we had Janet Harris at Petty G Mountain and McKenzie down at Queen. We'll hear from them as we continue on in our Totality Live special here on Arkansas PBS. Now, before we get to our first NASA guest this afternoon, I want to show you a video today that's featuring some history, also some tips on how to view an eclipse from a couple of future scientists you'll see. Telescope. Check. Solar filters. Check. Ham sandwiches. Ha Ham sandwiches? In case we get hungry, silly. Good thinking. Double check. What are we packing all this stuff for again? For the total solar eclipse. Oh, right. Wait. What actually is? A total solar eclipse. A total solar eclipse is when the moon passes directly in between the sun and the earth, blocking out the sun's light completely for a short time. So the moon covers the sun and daytime turns to night? Bingo! And eclipses occur in patterns that make it easier to know when one has happened or when one will take place again. Whoa! That sounds like magic! I know! It's amazing! Scientists have used this information to work hard and build technology that can now predict almost exactly when an eclipse will happen. And did you know it happened in Arkansas before? Did you know that? No way! Really? Yep. Once in 1834, and then again in 1918. That was a really long time ago. What do you think solar eclipses were like back then? That's a good question. Hmm. I imagine. <laughs> They were just as excited as we are here in 1834. Even though they didn't have smartphones or some of the modern technology we do, newspapers across the state announced the eclipse before it happened. They were prepared just like us. Yes, the news even warned people to wear colored glasses or stay inside when the eclipse happened. We even use special glasses to watch the eclipse now. How cool. The coolest. And the best part about that day, the weather was perfect. I don't get it. Why is the weather so important? Well, when it is cloudy and rainy, the clouds get in the way and cover up the sun and the moon. So it's like trying to watch your favorite TV show and somebody putting a big blanket in front of the screen? That's a great way to put it. Even though the solar eclipse is happening up there, the clouds and rain block our view so we can't see it. I'm so glad it was the perfect day for them. I bet the people in 1918 were excited too. Well, they weren't so lucky. It was super cloudy for that eclipse. Oh no! Well, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. When it is cloudy, light reflects differently, so it doesn't get as dark as it could, but you can still feel the eclipse. Feel the eclipse? Feel the eclipse. The eclipse may not be as visible when it is cloudy, but you may still see that it gets darker or the temperature may drop. You might even hear animals and people react to what they are experiencing too. 
feels like my superhero senses will be tingling. Oh, uh, something like that. I hope the weather for today's eclipse is just right. Let's get going so we can find out. Looks like that's everything. <gasps> Can't forget these. Scientists, was, we learned a little bit more about eclipses and also the history of eclipses in Arkansas. I want to welcome in a special guest now from NASA. We are so excited to have Dr. Bob Loper, a research astrophysicist from NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day, Dr. Loper. I know it's been exciting for you guys. What's it been like here in the city of Russellville and the connections you've made here in the community? It's been such a pleasure. Um, the city of Russellville has, has welcomed us with open arms, uh, been welcomed in the community. Uh, we've been here almost a week now. We got here last Wednesday night. Uh, we've done several uh, several scientific presentations for uh, the local schools and for Arkansas Tech. Uh, and we started here at the block party on Saturday morning. It's been amazing. The block party has grown. Uh, the block party has definitely grown it, today. It's grown. And, and of course, we are stationed at the train depot. And what that means is we will occasionally get what's coming right behind us right now, which is a, a freight train. So we'll let this pass by for just a moment. Dr. Loper, whenever you look at what the community has done to come together for something like this, what's it been like uh, from a research perspective whenever you get to share the knowledge and the information that you've obtained over many years with the folks behind you? Oh, it's so exciting. Uh, and I, I think if I can if I can reach out and help... Uh, Let me get that a little closer, just because of the train. If I can reach out and help at least one person uh, kindle an interest in science, then everything I'm doing is a win. Whenever you talk with them, what are some of the things they're asking about? What do they want to know? There are some amazing questions uh, people want to know. Uh, I think, well, since people have been watching the show, people have uh, been asking about the three-body problem. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to know how eclipses have been uh, calculated with such accuracy, uh, how we can say years and years out, hey, we're going to have an eclipse and it's going to go along this path. Well, that's something we learned about in that video uh, that we just showed, where even back in the 1800s, you know, mm -hmm. the newspaper reports came out saying there would be an event like this. You know, and we haven't had one here in Arkansas come through in over 100 years. So what is some of the technology that allows you all to be able to predict it with such great accuracy? Well, it's been, uh, eclipses have been predicted for, for thousands of years. Uh, and, and really all it takes is uh, being able to calculate uh, the, the motion of the three bodies that are involved, the, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. And if you can, the more precisely you can calculate their positions uh, with time, the more advanced notice you'll have of an, e an upcoming eclipse. And then whenever you talk about yourself taking in something like this, first one for you on a total? This is my first total eclipse. I've had four partial eclipses before that, but this is my first total, and I'm sharing it here with Russellville. Excited to have you here in Russellville with us. We're going to talk with you coming up in just a little bit about some of the more nuances when it comes to an eclipse. What some of our furry friends behind us, there are a lot of dogs in the park area today, are going to be feeling. What can we expect when that totality happens for four minutes and 12 seconds here in Russellville? We'll get to that in just a little bit. But whenever Dr. Loper's talking about these community connections, you know, that's been happening with NASA, but it's also been happening with so many others around the state of Arkansas. And this is something we wanted to share with you. This is a pretty cool video. Pay close attention. There's a scientific aspect, like what Dr. Loper was talking about, but there was also an artistic take on the total solar eclipse, as well as what NASA and the Research Center has been doing here over the last week. Check it out. Behind me is a workshop that's specially designed for students who are English language learners. Do you know that Spider-Man makes his own costume? So I thought it'd be fun to make something called a birthday cake. What they are doing is learning to transfer a pattern using grids and math. And this design is based on a constellation that was in the night sky during their birth month. An eclipse gives you an opportunity to think about these ideas. Constellations are actually are The stars we see at night depend on where you are on Earth. The arts are a way to really inspire people, but you've got to have a hook. You've got to have something that's special, out of the ordinary, what I call a spectacle. 
Dr. Gail Seymour of the University of Central Arkansas called me up and asked me if I would design a giant inflatable because they wanted something to help draw attention to the various events that you're having in Conway around this eclipse. So Luna is exactly that spectacle, literally larger than life at 25 feet tall. I'm proud that this is going to travel around Conway for a week and so many people are going to get to see her. In many of your classes, we've been talking about the solar eclipse. If you got off the bus, you noticed there was something going up in the front of the school. That is a really special eclipse-inspired sculpture. Yeah, we had the actual artist here. These were the initial drawings, so I had to do a left side, a right side view, and a back view. In the hallways of this school, there are some 500 plus superhero depictions inspired by Luna. And that's just an, a remarkable thing to get this kind of total school buy-in. I did a whole lesson on Mr. Brown and that he came from this area. And I think it can show them that like art can really take them anywhere. This is a really a once in a lifetime event for myself. It's been an incredible experience. I'm just very thankful. Hopefully this will be something that kids will remember their entire life. Welcome Dr. Kane. How y'all doing? Oh, good energy here. Are we ready for the eclipse? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. One more time. Are we ready for the eclipse? Yeah. Ah, excellent. So today we're meeting with, with the eighth graders, ninth graders, and I think high school students this afternoon. On a professional level, I hope they get interested in science. But on a personal level, I am hoping that they go out and they see things that they will remember and talk about for the rest of their lives. And when we do that, the moon's shadow is cast upon the Earth. And we're lucky here in Russellville, it's going right through the center of the state. It's going to get quite dark, and during totality, you're going to be looking at a near nighttime experience. You will experience a drop of temperature in your body, and you will feel something amazing that there is a cosmical alignment. So just to conclude my advice on Monday, enjoy and feel the eclipse. It's all about sharing a singular moment in time where the moon and the sun and the earth all line up at exactly the right point. Uh, I have never seen a total eclipse. I've seen many partial eclipses, but I've never been in the right place at the right time to actually see a total eclipse. So it's, it's a very exciting time. I'm really thrilled to be here in Russellville. I'm, I'm gonna view it with a huge smile on my face. That's how I'm gonna view it. And we welcome you back into Russellville. Yes, the time now, 1.22. So we are inching closer to totality here in the heart of the River Valley. Now, we're going to head back to some of our correspondents. For example, we'll be back into Queen in just a few moments. But before we get to that, we wanted to show you about why this eclipse is so unique, what makes it so special, and why so many people are descending upon our state to take it in. So what makes this eclipse or what separates it from maybe some other ones that we can view here on Earth? Take a look at this short video. In general, there are three types of eclipses in, in, that I, as I separate them in my mind. A solar eclipse in general, you get uh, the moon gets in the way of our view of the sun. Uh, and whether we call it a partial or an annular or total eclipse depends on how much of the sun is blocked. So a partial is just you block a portion of the sun. It requires that the, the moon be fairly precisely along the Earth-Sun line so that we actually see the moon in our field of view. If the alignment is particularly good, uh, you can get what's called an annular eclipse, where the portion of the sun that's blocked is the center of the disk. And you see this ring of fire around it uh, that's called an annulus. If the moon is closer, then the moon appears bigger in our field of view, and then that annular eclipse is instead a total eclipse. And then you're not seeing any more of the big yellow ball of flame in the sky, but you're seeing the stuff around it, you're seeing the solar atmosphere. All right, and back here in Russellville, yes, it is uh, a little darker already. You can tell that the lights or the lighting 
feels almost like it's on a dimmer right now as the path continues. Once again, 125 is the local time here in Russellville, and we're expecting that totality to start at 150, so about 25 minutes from now. And we're getting views from all over the state of Arkansas. You saw down there in Dequeen what it looked like, McKenzie down there. We've got camera viewpoints from everywhere from the eastern side to the western side and everywhere in between as we're trying to give you as many viewpoints as possible of what this looks like. And we've got partners down in the southwestern portion of the region who have provided different images for us. So there's so many different ways to take this in. Of course, the best way is to do it live, and so many people are behind us right now doing that. And, even more so now you can see the lighting start to dim even more around so this is pretty exciting okay so back in 2017 we experienced a partial solar eclipse so it was similar to what we're experiencing right now at this very moment and middle school students in nettleton public schools up in jonesboro decided to do a fun science experiment with their class they knew they were going to be seniors this year in 2024 so they planted a time capsule and we were there with our cameras rolling as they opened it back up in anticipation of today's event Ms. Cochran, my fellow science teacher, and I came up with the idea of doing a time capsule six years ago with our science students because we were looking ahead and trying to get them excited about the next eclipse, which would be a total solar eclipse. And we knew that would happen when they are seniors. So Ms. Field and I uh, knew the significance of the solar eclipse that was happening that year in 2017. And we knew that these students would then be seniors uh, when the next one came around. And so we just kind of um, came up with the idea that a time capsule would be a great way to commemorate the day, uh, put in some artifacts so that the students when they're seniors can pull all of that out and look through it and kind of just have memories of their sixth grade year. To me, I thought that it was just a once in a lifetime opportunity, like we wouldn't see the eclipse again. So it was like a very special moment for me. It was the biggest thing that happened that year. A week before it happened, like the whole school curriculum was based on it. So it was hyped up really big and it was so much fun. I think the time capsule to me at the time wasn't a big deal because I really didn't know what it was. But when we started talking about it more, I was very excited because I wanted to make drawings, a, a, a letter to myself, my future self, and uh, yeah, it was very exciting to me. Whenever we watched the video, I almost got teary-eyed because it, it's just sweet to see, like, we were so little. At the time, I thought being a senior was so far away, and here I am, and so it was just, like, it went by so fast, and it was really cool to see everything. It was real nostalgic. I put in a painting, I did an art class of the moon covering the sun, and also I had a paper that had the phases of when the moon covered it all the way and partial. Seeing my former students was amazing. Um, they've grown up so much. You know, a lot changes in six years. That was a very special year. It was the last year that we were in Nettleton Middle School. I was so proud. I was just proud of the things um, that they were finding. I was proud of all of the teachers in our building at the time who put all of that work into it. You could just tell that it was a full collaborative effort. So I was just very proud of what we had accomplished that day and to really see it all come full circle and to see the students' faces light up with those memories. Fantastic, Mackenzie. So tell me where you're from. I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. We came up this morning. Um, we looked at a lot of different places to come and we uh, decided that Dequeen was the place to be. It's right on the center line and we just wanted to be in a small town. Well, that's amazing. I'm so glad that you're here. And tell us, like, what does it mean to come? I know it's Shreveport's not very far away. So um, how, you know, what does it mean to come to Arkansas and experience the eclipse here in this small town? Well, you know, we, it's going to be, you can see it in Shreveport, but it's about 97%. And that's just not like seeing it in totality. And that's like we had to, we had to go ahead and make the trip to do that. And then we met such amazing people here. We were having this fantastic food. We met EO, who is putting this whole Think production together here that has y'all here. Uh, he's got this soccer field behind his house, a full-size soccer field. 
I coach rugby, and now this has all brought he and I together to bring my rugby team here to play rugby and raise money to keep building this field that he does for the youth here in town. It's just phenomenal how it's all coming together. That is so amazing. And so you've come up from Louisiana. You're making connections in Arkansas, all just from watching an eclipse. I mean, that's crazy. I know, it really is. And, you know, his his program, uh, the more I've learned about it, he made, had me tour the field. He does so much for the youth in this town. And that's and it's called uh, Samaritan Field. My team is called Revelation Rugby after the last book of the Bible. So, and we work with a lot of guys when they get out of incarceration. So these two coming together and helping to build this field all around this eclipse, it's, it's just perfect. Well, we're so glad that you decided to come and experience the eclipse in little old Arkansas. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Well, we can't thank you enough for coming here. And as soon as you're finished, y'all make sure you get some of this amazing food he's got going here. Oh, yeah. You don't have to ask me twice. It smells amazing. I think we're going to go ahead and take it back to Russellville. Um, enjoy the eclipse. Back in, Dr. Bob Loper, of course, from the research, astro he's a research astrophysicist from NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Dr. Loper, it's starting to get a little darker here. It is. It, and we can uh, tell. You're hearing some oohs and ahs in the crowd. I am. And we're also starting to feel the wind come in. Yes. As, the, as it starts to cool down. So is that is that part of, is that part of the expectation? You part of the expectation is uh, the as the atmosphere cools down, it'll start rushing in. Okay. Yeah. What, what are some of the other things we can expect uh, when this? A lot of dogs in the crowd right now. We've heard different things about how animals react to this. Yeah, so as we get closer and closer to totality, it's going to start looking more and more like night. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of animals uh, like to sleep at night. And so you may find that your your pet wants to take a nap. Crickets and maybe start chirping in, crickets, the, in, yep. in the distance here? Uh, yeah, so uh, similarly, anything that comes out at night might think it's night and it's time to get up. Okay, so we're starting to feel a little bit more wind coming in right now. It's getting a little bit darker. Where are we exactly? As I say, it's 132. And I just looked, and you said, what, what percentage do you think we are right I, I now? I think we're about 65% to, uh, totality. Okay. When it comes to darkness, I mean, would, I mean, truly like nighttime darkness, is that what we're expecting, or, or kind of where the sun is just about to set? So it'll be it'll be between those. Okay. It won't be pitch black, but it'll be, uh, if you imagine sort of the pre-dawn or post-dusk hours where it's going to be dark, but you'll see along the horizon, you'll see a little bit of glow. Is, tell us about NASA's decision to come here to Russellville and, and, and the Space Center that you are at. What, why Russellville? What was, what were the factors that went into play? So Arkansas is one of the states that um, NASA Marshall uh, services. So e each center has a number of states that it services uh, as part of representation uh, so that you, so the taxpayer gets their money's worth of, of what what's paid. Uh, and Arkansas is in our uh, service area. So we started uh, looking at towns along the uh, along the eclipse path, and we got to Russellville and talked with Christy Graham, who runs the Tourism Bureau here, uh, and as soon as we got off the phone with her, uh, it was a done deal. You knew. We knew. Uh, <laughs> we knew that Russellville got it. Uh, Russellville knew things were going to, it was going to be a big deal, and they were prepared for it. So many factors go into this, not just the timing of it and the planning of it on y'all's end, yep. but also you you got to have a host city like Russellville that is so welcoming and, and embraces it. And then also you got to have the, there, it feels like the, the math equation and you guys, that's your specialty. There's a lot of different factors into it. And it seems like right now it's all adding up. It's all falling into place. This is, this and, is going to be. And this is the place to be. I and mean, we, we're having a pretty good view of the sun right now. Yes, no, I agree. We did hear there would be some high clouds in the area. Well, right now you can kind of see them behind us a little bit off in the distance, but so far over the sun at least, not seeing any of that at it all. It looks good. And what are you trying to study here today? What what, what are some of you and your fellow colleagues trying to uh, discover or, or, or learn more about our sun? So uh, we're uh, hoping to learn more about the sol solar corona, that's the outer atmosphere of the sun, uh, and learn how it react, how it's uh, the plasma, the ionized gas within, uh, and its magnetic field evolves over time. And we are closer to solar maximum uh, now. Uh, the 2017 eclipse is closer to solar minimum. And solar max and solar min are um, periods of solar activity. So the solar magnetism, sunspot activity, uh, and, and we find that the solar corona is more active during solar maximum. And so we're looking to see a really nice show with the corona. Okay, and something that you can't really study without an eclipse? Is it hard to, is it more it, difficult to study because of the way the light 
is... So there are a couple of factors there. Uh, in a natural eclipse, where we have the moon in the way, the moon covers the sun pretty precisely. And so we're able to see deeper into the corona than we can. Uh, we, we've made artificial corona, we call them uh, occulting disks, or uh, that we use for coronagraphs. Okay. So we use those in spacecraft to block out part of the sun so that we can see parts of the solar corona. Okay. But in order to keep the, those spacecraft aligned properly, there's a, there's a little bit of play uh, so that you keep eclipsing the, the, the big yellow ball in the sky, as it were. Whenever it comes to talking with, especially the young uh, audience that want to come and learn a little bit more, how impactful is something like this to further their interest into your field and hopefully continue it on and continue the legacy that you and your colleagues have begun? Oh, we've spoken with so many kids uh, here in Russellville who are very interested in the, in the eclipse, and not only the eclipse, but in science in general. And this is something, too, that I know is considered once in a lifetime because the next one is going to be in how long? So here in Russellville, uh, the next eclipse will be in 2045. Okay. Uh, there's another one in the United States in 2044, but you have to travel to, say, North Dakota or Montana to see it. Will we have totality here in in Arkansas, or just we'll, we'll see a partial like some of our neighbors to the east and west? Regionally? I'm not sure of the exact path, okay. but it's definitely within driving distance. Oh, okay. So not too bad. Not too bad. Well, And, and the, the, this is, eclipse has been hyped up, the great American solar eclipse. Yes. Why, why has it been such... Uh, such more of, of a big deal, it seems like, than some of its predecessors. Well, the eclipse path puts this eclipse uh, in the path of 32 million Americans. Wow. And not only that, uh, we've had so many visitors. Uh, the last count I'd heard was uh, on the board over there at the train depot, uh, visitors from all 50 states and 32 countries. Wow. So people have come from all around to see this eclipse. And this is something, too, that you, you talk with folks and rarely has anyone even seen something like this. So right. the expectation, I, I was going to ask you, what are you expecting? And, and everybody's a little different, right? It's like, I'm just expecting to see something I've never seen or felt before. And as I say, feel, you felt that, that breeze come through I again, that right? breeze come through, that's right. I, I've been told to expect, essentially, my mind to be blown. Really? Okay. And what are some of the things, too, that uh, you, you all hope to take away out of this? I, I, other than the science aspect, what are you hoping to bring back in terms of, uh, you know, the experience as a whole back to Huntsville? Uh, so I hope that, I mean, of course, the, this, I expect this eclipse to affect me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope to bring a, uh, that memory of a relationship that maybe we can uh, continue. Well, fantastic. Dr. Loper, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate it. And this is going to be something that everyone is getting even more excited about. We are roughly 13 minutes away. It's 1.37 p.m. right now, so roughly 13 minutes away from totality. The darkness is continuing to fall over Russellville in a good way, and we are excited to bring Totality Live to you as we continue. In fact, we're going to continue our statewide coverage right now. We're going to send things up to Candace Evans, live at Nettleton High School in Jonesboro with a final check on the northeastern side of the state. Hey guys, we're back in Jonesboro, Arkansas at Nettleton High School softball field. I'm Candace Evans, and I'm here with Mackenzie Racy. And as you all can see, we're getting closer to totality. I had to take my sunglasses off so I can see now it's not as bright. Now, Mackenzie, in 2017, we did have the opportunity to see a partial eclipse. Now we have the opportunity to see a total eclipse. So take me through your emotions, how you're feeling. I know this is your thing. So tell me a little bit about it. Um, I'm definitely really excited that I'm getting to see a total eclipse yeah. because it's going to get really dark during the day. And I mean, the partial didn't do that. It was about how it is right now. And just to see it get really, really dark is going to be super exciting and kind of cool. Absolutely. So now, Mackenzie, I know you are interested in space. So tell me about your future plans. You're a junior right now. So tell us a little bit about what the future looks for you, looks like for you. Um, yes, I'm trying to go to uh, um, University of Alabama Huntsville to study aerospace engineering. And so, because I, I'm also, I re also really like programming things, and to be an engineer, you need to program, especially like rovers or satellites or spaceships. Awesome. And this moment or wanting to go to college there is really special because you had the opportunity to go there in fifth grade, yes. right? Sixth so grade. sixth grade. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, yes. In sixth grade, I had the opportunity to go to space camp and I was really excited because the year before was fifth grade and that's when I experienced the eclipse. And I was like, okay, space is interesting. Let's go. 
Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about what you desire to do after college. Um, I want to be an aerospace engineer and I would like to work for NASA because I think that would be like really cool to just work for such a huge company and organization and building satellites and rovers and anything they need for me to do. Yeah, awesome. So have you always wanted to, to be an aerospace engineer or did it just come overnight or did the eclipse kind of spark you wanting to go in that direction? Um, the eclipse definitely um, sparked my interest for space, but when I went to space camp, I went into the robotics program and so just dealing with the robots and the programming just kind of you know sparked that interest for building and designing and engineering. Awesome so do you have any special projects that you're working on now or some big ones that you've built in the past? Mm, not really. No. Not really. So if you could build any type of project or do something really cool what would that look like? Um. I would definitely want to, this is going to be really crazy, but I really want to live on Mars, so I'd probably just build a house on Mars and just okay. probably a smart house on Mars just to where the air could be breathable and livable. Awesome. So in your free time, is that what you study? Do you read about it or do you watch cool YouTube videos? What does that look like? Um, probably just watching YouTube videos or watching TikTok videos, just about it. Yeah, so since the solar eclipse is here in Jonesboro, has there been a height in the videos that have been produced, or is it still about the same? Um, I think there's definitely been a height, just because of this special event that's happening, like a total eclipse, and not just the partial. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mackenzie. We're here in Jonesboro. Chris, back to you in Russellville. All right, we welcome you back into Russellville, and thank you, Candace, for that report from Nettleton High School. So many exciting things they have going on up there, especially being able to open that time capsule. Such a special moment for that senior group. Okay, so our next guest today, I'm so pleased to introduce you to David Weigel. He is the Planetarium Director for the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, the home of Space Camp. David, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate all that you guys are doing to make this truly a once-in-a-lifetime event. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here and so very excited. You know, I've, I've been really looking forward to this day to see this total solar eclipse uh, really ever since the, the last one and in 2017 that I saw, first, first eclipse that I saw. And, um, you know, Russellville has just been so amazingly accommodating and welcoming, and I, I couldn't think of a better place to be. You got a chance to uh, speak with students at the schools. What was that like? I saw you on stage and you were interacting with them and, and just sharing really some of the fun facts about why this is happening in their town and, and what makes it so special. What was that like? Sure, yeah. So I, I was really uh, honored to, to be asked by NASA to accompany them with, you know, some of those conversations that we had uh, throughout the week. And, I mean, we've talked to thousands of people at this point, uh, a, lot of, a lot of children as well, and uh, just trying to give people a little bit of expectation for, you know, what they're going to experience today. And um, I think a, a key thing is that you can prepare people intellectually for, for what they're going to experience. And, um, and people can come prepared, but it's such a unique and sort of full body experience. I mean, even right now, right, it's, it's dimmed considerably. Oh, it's yes. cooling. It was such a hot day. Now it's cooled off a good bit, and I'm, I'm not sweating profusely <laughs> anymore, right? Um, so I, I think it's, it's been really neat to, to see the reaction from all the children, from all the... Uh, the individuals that we've interacted with, and you know, this is uh, sort of the the smaller town feel. So we're we're here. In in, we were here earlier this week. We got to interact with everybody, and, and now we're seeing all of them. And they're all coming up and saying, you know, you, you talked to me about this, and, oh, and here yes. we are. Like, it's happening, and, you know, we, we all get to do this together. We and just, that's a really special thing. We just saw a few different viewpoints from our statewide coverage. DeQueen. 144. They're about to go through totality down okay, there. Ours okay. is 150. So, and yep. David reminded me, said, we're going to stay on track because yep. we're going to step behind the stage here in just a few moments and take it in ourselves. 144. What time should we step back? In a Let's couple of like minutes? say like three minutes before. Three minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Three minutes. 47. Keep, keep yeah. us on. Yeah. 47. We'll keep, we'll keep on track here. Um, but David, when it comes down to what you all do is, and I asked Dr. Loper about this as well, is it, you're kind of invigorating a, an interest, you know, with these young students. And you are the home of Space Camp. 
no better time to get students excited about Space Camp and what you all do than have their hometown witness something like this. Sure, sure thing. Yeah, we, um, you know, my role at the U.S. Space Rocket Center, home of Space Camp, is to engage as many people as possible and really just bring the hype uh, for all of, uh, to, to be NASA's voice, essentially, and, and Artboard. Uh, to, to show off all the amazing discoveries and science that's being done by, you know, so many brilliant individuals, uh, both in our country and around the world all the time. And, uh, yeah, it, it's been such a, a joy to, to share that with Russellville specifically. You mentioned, too, as we've gone through all of our different cameras around the state, to Queen, Petty Jean, and up in uh, at Nettleton High School in Jonesboro, the, just the emotional experience, something you can't anticipate, something sure. you just have to feel. Pretty big crowd today to share that with. Absolutely. Is it, do Absolutely. You, do you, the last one you visited, I mean, was it something that resonated with the crowd and with the audience that oh. you were all surrounded by? Absolutely. And I was in a much more intimate setting, yeah. um, maybe, I don't know, 30 people or so. And oh, it was wow. still, the, the the emotion was so, it was very, you know, tentative at first and then just sort of uproarious. And, and we were kind of expecting with the crowd, we were into it to be pretty casual. And it wasn't. Everyone really, like... You know, got very excited and vocal, and so I would I would expect a, a very vocal response from this audience as well. You'll hear lots of cheering, lots of of whoops and screams and sighs, and just people do weird things, and it's part of the experience. Well, you know, you never think going to a small town you do something bigger than the last time, but you're going from 30 to about 3,000 that are waiting behind sure, us at as least, it gets yeah. even. Yeah, at least, and that's 3,000 just in our area, in little, our vicinity, in little circle, yep. right here. All right, so right now it's 46. Okay. Do we want to step behind? I think we do. We're getting great we views do. from all over the state. Huge shout out to our photojournalists that are stationed in Dequeen, Russellville. Here we go. We're getting some yeah, people well, getting yeah, excited. Let's, step, let's, let's go ahead and step back. All right, and remember, and David, please explain to everybody the safety aspect of this as well. Absolutely. So you, you, it is imperative that you look at the sun only through approved solar filters like these eclipse glasses right here, and you need to keep them on until the moment of totality, and that's when you can no longer see anything through those eclipse glasses. Okay. So, so we're looking up here just a tiny little sliver. We're looking to see the diamond ring effect or Bailey's beads. What is it called? Diamond ring or Bailey's beads? This Bailey's is, beads. This is an effect where the little last bit of sun eking around that disk of the moon is going through just the, the sort of rough craters on the, the edge of the moon. Oh, wow, incredible. And it's truly spectacular. All right, once again, 1.47 the time right now. If you look up, it is still very bright, so don't do that without your glasses. Uh, totality into Queen, 4.17. That's the longest in the state. Here in Russellville, 4 minutes and 12 seconds is the expectation on time of totality as it continues to inch so slowly but so much closer right now our friends down in hot springs are experiencing something like this uh, technically right now the still in that totality line uh, as they started at 1 46 p.m nettleton high school in jonesboro their totality time is expected to be at 1 56 p.m and they will have two minutes and 24 seconds as we look up and noticeably darker all around the city here as folks are continuing to take this in and it gets so, so close. Yeah, as, as that moon approaches closer, you can see sort of the edges of the crescent just getting shrink, uh, shrunker. I can't even talk because I think that's exciting. a word. You, you can say that. Idea. Shrunker, sure. <laughs> Smaller. There you go. Amazing. Shrunker, that works, yes. So this eclipse path came into view around 12.33 p.m. You can start to hear the crowd as well. Yes, the cheers all around as it gets even closer. Yep. 1.48, we're two minutes away from totality. But at 12.33 is when the first little edge made its way over the sun. And David, this is expected to last until 3.11 p.m. Uh, yeah, so you get you get another hour and a half or so uh, on the back end, although definitely the star of the show is about to begin right now. We so do have a little bit of cloud cover over this, but uh -huh. it's it's pretty pretty minimal, pretty high altitude, pretty diffuse, so we should have some, some very good viewing regardless. Yeah, it's getting even closer. Once again, totality starting in just one minute, one minute away. And again, it is noticeably cooler at this point. We, we've dropped probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight degrees, uh, maybe more than that. And um, our the, light's the only thing providing light in this area, it seems like really, right now yeah, from our it's set. A, it's a good bit, good bit darker. Wow. Not quite night dark, but but pretty dark indeed. I was asking uh, Dr. Loper earlier, he said kind of the in-between when it's totally dark and the sun's setting. Exactly, yeah, that sort of dusk. Oh, wow, oh, this is very incredible. close. So we're very close to uh, diamond ring effect. 
Got a little bit more cloud cover. But the anticipation is rising. Oh, wow. This could be it right here. That is spectacular. Wow. Amazing. She's covered. Holy moly. So we can look now without our glasses. You can take them off, and that is incredible. Oh, my God. Goodness. So the solar corona is such a pretty shape. That's the, the diffuse outer atmosphere of our sun that's sort of streaming away all this plasma uh, that is shaped by the sun's magnetism. And uh, wow, I mean, that shape is incredible. And again, this is what I was saying. You, you have this idea of what to expect, and um, you know, it, it just, it, it's beyond words. Four minutes and 12 seconds, certainly under that now. And you but can, if you look around too, you can see some uh, some bright stars uh, and planets next to it. That bright dot next to it, to our, our sort of below there, is Jupiter. An airplane just went by. And bugs have emerged. Bugs have emerged. There in, are bugs all force. over our lighting over here. <laughs> it is nighttime in their world. And the party is raging. Yes. Uh, it, it, looking around the city, complete darkness except for that. Oh my Beautiful. goodness! What is it? What is it called? Bailey's beads. Ba so uh, Bailey's beads already happened. So okay. Yeah, so this is the the solar corona. So this that's is that, okay. that that tenuous, thin, wispy outer atmosphere that is very hot but not very bright, and so we can only ever see it during totality itself. Remind our viewers what exactly NASA is trying to study right now. Um, so, so honestly, so there's there's a variety of different NASA missions. Uh, there's some sounding rockets that have been launched to better understand the ionosphere. So that's sort of like the upper atmosphere. Um, we have some uh, aircraft that are following and again trying to figure out, uh, trying to better understand atmospheric conditions. Uh, but honestly, solar eclipses uh, have a little bit less scientific value than they've had in the past because okay. we have ways of doing sort of simulated or I guess artificial eclipses for instruments. Um, so. Really, solar eclipses are most spectacular in the sort of human viewing element. And so, yeah, there's, there's science being done, absolutely, but um, the, the best part of it is just watching it. And watching and, and others, there's too. There's no substitution, right, for seeing this in person. No, it it's is, incredible. It is truly all or nothing. If you're in the path of totality, you've won, and if you didn't, I'm sorry. You need to go <laughs> next time. <laughs> next time in uh, 20 years, I believe. 20, 21, yeah. 20, yeah, 21 years. Absolutely incredible. That is, I mean, 108 to 122 mile wide totality path through the state today. And right now, in the heart of the River Valley, you've got an absolute out of this world phenomenon. That is just incredible. At, now, David? Yep. At what point do we have to put our glasses back on? Uh, pretty much the second before, uh, which we're, we're approaching. I don't know <laughs> I was about where to we say, are, but we're getting there. It's looking a little like we're, we're about there. 153 right now, so we're probably uh, about a minute away. Yep, pretty, getting pretty close. Um, it, will be, it will be noticeable. Usually that we've got a bit of a countdown. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. You'd have to ask the production crew. We're live on the air right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know. There we go. Got one off right there. There you go. Well, David. Yeah, that's. You wonder scary. how often do things live up to the hype? It's better, right? I'd say so. It's better. Oh, we are approaching 53. At the end of 53 here, we were told. Yep. Four minutes and 12 seconds, so. Only, yep, only got about a moment or two more. It does start to seem like it's already getting brighter it as does. it continues yep, to so traverse. So you want those glasses ready? Yeah. Yep. Here we go, getting close. Street lights are on around the city, by the way, as the sensors have come on. And there we go, yep. Put them there back on. There it is, put them back on. Okay, I see it. Wow. Incredible. Amazing. Just that tiny little sliver as it continues to move across. What is it? Uh, Di diamond ring? 1,500 yep. miles per hour. It's technically about, moving, yep. Yep, yet about. it seems so slow because yep, the distance is. Exactly. Yes. exactly. I know time seems to stop. Faster than the speed of sound, the shadow is moving across 
and yet it doesn't seem like it. Uh, crazy, crazy. Absolutely and actually, incredible. you know, this is a good moment to sort of look around and just to, to take in the audience and 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 wow, I mean, everyone's still spellbound, right? Oh, absolutely. Everyone's on is, is planning in their mind their next trip. To well, go see you know, one. that's the thing that you hear from a few folks around is they said, I went to the one in 2017, and I said, I'm not going to miss another one. Exactly. Paducah, Kentucky, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. You know, we were hearing from folks that watched it over there. And here we can step back up yeah, sure thing. onto the platform now and get set. Absolutely incredible when it comes down to the feeling of it. And you mentioned it, too. One of the things that maybe you don't get when you're talking about it to a classroom. Now everything seems yeah, bright. I know. <laughs> Almost need to wear these while, <laughs> exactly. while the lights turn back on here on all our set all at all Arkansas are, PBS. All the um, lights are going back confused. I mean, you go through some of these cities, David, you know, just in Arkansas. You got DeQueen, as we mentioned, Arkadelphia, Hot Springs, Conway, Clinton, Texarkana, Mountain View, all these towns. What you all did here in Russellville, the same type of enthusiasm and interest can now domino and snowball in all these other towns. And Maybe they can come visit you for space camp. A absolutely. Hey, <laughs> we wouldn't complain. We'd be very welcoming and, and return the hospitality, to be sure. I got to tell you, just seeing now, look, bugs are starting to go away. Yep, they were exactly. flooding the, our floodlights here, basically. Absolutely. You know, co collapsing on them. And now, even with just that slightest change in uh, in sunshine, as it continues to make its way over, the bugs have almost disappeared. So. I know. It, 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 it feels like we've gone through night and, and back. I mean, it's like a... A four-minute <laughs> nightfall? Exactly. A four-minute nightfall, Sunrise exactly. once again. A okay, so, so 1918 was the last time a solar eclipse made its way through the state of Arkansas, which I think is why a lot of people realize the, the uniqueness to this and, and why you should not miss out on a chance to do something sure. like this. Um, you know, what's it been like as you kind of wrap things up? And what have you all been studying over there on your own cameras? And what have you been trying to do for the uh, as planetarium director for, for the for Sure, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll say for, answer the second question first. Um, on, on our end, you know, we're, we're science communicators. And so um, our goal has not been to do um, hard science per se or research, but rather to just share this experience with everybody. So um, we've had a bunch of telescopes set up with, with safe solar filters for people to view uh, the sun during the, the partial... Uh, part of the eclipse, um, much more up close. You can see some really nice uh, sunspots uh, on the surface. There's not as many as we expected, but there's some. Um, so, and it, it's just been our chance to be in the community and, and sharing that excitement with everybody. And you know, the excitement's already very high, so Definitely. we're just adding to it some. Um, but our our experience here, as as I've said, has really just been amazing. We we had high expectations. Uh, we were excited to be here. And again, like everyone we've talked to, it's, it's been so overwhelmingly nice. Everywhere we've went, people have been so excited. And it, it, it's just continued, and here we are. I mean, we were having a crazy dance party in the middle of, uh, you know, downtown last night. I got way less sleep than I needed to, and, you know, we're still all here smiling and having a great time. So Jonesboro going through it right now. They are in the uh, next path of totality, a little bit shorter time just based on where they are on the axis, about two and a half minutes, but they're seeing the same thing, sure. that, that ring and that fire around it. Petty Jean experiencing something similar to what we have right now. It, it's kind of insane to think how bright it seems now compared to what it was just a few moments well, ago. Exactly. Fastest sunrise we've ever had, it feels like. I mean, <laughs> you, essentially. You and now when the sun does fully come back out, it, I think we're all going to need sunglasses at the very oh, least. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. And, um, okay. and, no, I was going to ask just about Space Camp. And I, I want our viewers at home to, to maybe learn a little bit more a little bit more about what you guys do and, and how their kids could take part and come to Space Camp and participate with you guys. Sure thing. Well, I'll, I'll start by saying that you can learn more at rocketcenter.com. And we have uh, a whole host of Space Camp programs that start early, maybe eight, nine years old. Um, we have week-long camps. We have weekend camps. We have midweek camps, that sort of thing. Uh, it's basically astronaut camp where you learn to be an astronaut and uh, go through some simulated missions or you learn about you know previous history of missions. You go to the Intuitive Planetarium where we do exclusive live and interactive uh, exclusively live and interactive shows where either myself or someone on our team is the audience's personal tour guide to the universe on the topic at hand, uh, all featuring immersive visualizations that we make in-house. Um, so, you know, it's it's a, an experience for kids, but it's also for adults. We have adult camp. It's an experience for families. We have family camp. Oh, we wow. usually run those over weekends. Okay. So you can, you know, take your family of however many, as long as you're less than 16, that's what that's how many are in a team. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I guess you could split over a couple teams if you're, sure. if you're bigger than that. Yeah. But um, but yeah, and can come experience it all together. And it's it's a really unique camp. Uh, it's a, an excellent experience. And um, you know the 
the entire U.S. Space and Rocket Center as a whole is also a museum. And so even if you're if you're just in the Huntsville area for the day, um, we have all sorts of amazing artifacts, including uh, the largest Smithsonian artifact, uh, which is the National Historic Landmark Saturn V rocket. So it was, a, it was a test article. We have the entire thing suspended over your head um, inside a building. Oh, wow. And it is, I mean, you walk in and it's just, wow. It's uh, it, like today. You know, like today. it's a wow moment. It's a wow moment. Maybe it's not, not this not wow. Okay, it's a different not wow. Not quite, it's but a it's still wow. Yes. A different wow. It still counts. Exactly. Well, that that sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully you guys get a lot of different uh, families and students sure. from all across the state of Arkansas. Hope that to got see to everyone. Witness history here like we did in Russellville. You know, this is something where you're already seeing people start to leave and head out. We've heard that, you know, traffic can be a little hectic as people are more so leaving than when they come in because everyone kind of staggers coming mm -hmm. in. Well, as you can see now, yeah, quick, a lot of quick people clearing exodus, out yep. at the exact same time. Good news is road construction halted in the state of Arkansas since April 5th until tomorrow. So construction zones maybe not as treacherous that you typically have to go through. But 103 school districts were out of school using this as That's their amazing. own science experiment and, and learning you experience. Would learn. <laughs> and what better way to do so than be out and learn by sight, feel and sound, which you heard nothing but oohs and ahs in the crowd, and you got to see something absolutely spectacular. Truly. Well, thank you so much, David. I really appreciate you. your time. Great and to talk appreciate to appreciate everything that you guys have done this week. Likewise. Yep. We appreciate being here. Uh, thrilled to come to Russellville and happy to come back soon. We look forward to it. Thanks so much. 21 years? is our, Well, I don't know if we're hosting totality in 21 years. We'll come but back to climb you can stop. Then. Yeah, you can stop you by go. on the way. Yeah, so we appreciate that. Sounds well, good. The sun is, of course, coming back out. Uh, patrons starting to leave as uh, they are exiting behind us and they are heading out on the road, so please be safe out there. The moon shadow continues to make its way across the sun, and it will continue to brighten up throughout the day on this gorgeous uh, spring, early summer day here in the state of Arkansas. But Totality Live coming to a close now. We just want to say thank you to all of our partners during this event, the Arkansas Department of Education, Division of Elementary and Secondary Ed Education, Arkansas Ideas. Also, we want to thank our host cities today, like DeQueen, Russellville, and Jonesboro. We'd like to say special thank you to the places that hosted us, like Nettleton High School and the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute on Petty Jean Mountain. And I think I speak for everyone here today as a part of the PBS family when I say thank you for sharing this experience with us it has been a pleasure to bring you an event that has truly been out of this world. I'm Chris Kane. Thank you, and have a great and safe day.